In today's video, I am going to be breaking down VJ Edgecombe and how he plays the game of basketball. He is one of the top ranked players in the United States, so we can all learn from him how we can become better players ourselves. Let's get down, let's check him out. If you would like a custom basketball training program, make sure to go check out the link down in the description below. And if you want me to break down your shooting form, the link is down there as well. Let's get, let's get down, let's check out VJ Edgecombe. The one thing I really like is that a lot of his highlights show his defensive capabilities, and that is something that is very special. There are not a lot of players who will take dedication into playing defense as he does in these clips and even in his career. We can see in this next clip right here that he's able to predict that pass going towards the 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 corner of the sideline and of course this player the offensive player was running away from the ball trying to catch the ball going behind him vj was able to read that he was able to pick this pass off and then go back the other direction take only a few dribbles and now he's able to posterize the other team being able to move off ball as we see in this clip right here where his teammate was able to dump off a pass he was cutting baseline or cutting out uh from the wing from the 45 and he was able to get that ball and he was able to then posterize the other team one more time being able to move off ball is something that he does extremely well as we can see here cutting from the point receiving that pass in the paint and then going straight up for that dunk players who cut off ball and look to dunk right away are very important to have at the next level this next clip is also very special too because right here we have a pass from the point over towards the wing and instead of just sitting there waiting for that pass to get to this man and then ding this man up vj tries to go for that steal which he did and then he was able to go all the way down to the other end and he was able to finish with a dunk and if we see how many dribbles he takes this is one dribble this is a second dribble he was able to take two dribbles to get all the way down court the fewer amount of dribbles that you take the better off you're going to be because people move slower when they're dribbling the ball. Again, moving off ball is extremely important in his game and this is why being able to move off ball is so very important. At the college level, you may not always have the ball in your hands to be able to run an offense. So being able to get into position as we see in this clip right here, where his teammate's able to hit him with that off ball cut and he's able to finish with that dunk, this is why I think he's going to do extremely well at the next level, being the NCAA or pro. He's also a very solid three-point shooter as well. We can see that in this clip. His shoulder, elbow are in line with that rim. This is extremely important. He has a nice straight flick, a nice straight release with zero thumb flick. This is going to allow him to have a very consistent shot. And he was able to make this shot as well. You can really see his shooting form right here. And it's absolutely perfect. While it is a bit lower than what some coaches may think is appropriate. A lot of coaches want it just a bit higher above the forehead instead of at the forehead. However, this is totally fine. He has a nice high release. His elbow is above his forehead. And he has some really good backspin on that ball as well. He's also not afraid to pull up in an early shot clock situation as we see right here he has the distance between his man and himself and he was able to pull for that shot and he made this one as well I'm one of the coaches that actually likes the fact that players will pull early in the shot and this is actually very important in an offense too because now you can get that defense understanding that hey if I'm not Ding you up, if I'm not contesting your shot, if I have my hands down, then I am now going to be at the disadvantage. This is going to later on in the game pull that defender up tighter to VJ, which will allow him to then blow by that man and to be able to get some easy baskets. But the best part when it comes to his game is the fact that he cuts off ball. He's able to move off ball, which is extremely important. He's also able to hit the corner three, and if you are looking to play in the NCAA, you need to be able to hit the corner three. This is a non-negotiable. Every player at every position needs to be able to do that. And he's able to shoot from deeper than NBA range. We can see that right here. NBA range is somewhere in this range, so he's maybe a foot past the, three, the NBA three range, and he's able to drain these shots too. 
so he has range. He can extend a defense out farther. He's also able to attack with the ball as well. Some players are very one-dimensional. Here he's able to attack that rim very successfully to be able to score. He gets the foul call too. Why this was able to happen, and we're going to put this in really slow motion, he's able to push this ball through that double team, and then he's able to take one last dribble right there. He gathers on that right foot. Now, he keeps that ball high above his head. If he was to keep that ball low and at his waist, one of these two defenders would have probably stolen the ball and because not many referees are able to see what happens in this area of your body, he could have had his arms hacked off and no foul calls would have been made. So, keep that ball high. That way you're showing the referees that there's contact on your arms. He takes one step and then he's able to go up for that shot and yes he got the foul. So if you're a player liking to attack the rim and you don't keep that ball high showing the referee that you are getting hit on the arm then this is something that you need to add to your game. VJ is also able to do these nice two foot floaters in the middle of the key as well. This is a part of, a, uh, of your game that you need to develop if you're looking to play at the next level. The reason being is if you want to play pro, if you want to play in the NCAA division one you need to be able to go off of both of your feet with a floater because now going off of both of your feet you are now going to be balanced you are not going to be able to be hit very easily going up with two hands protects the ball and then going up for the floater is important because you are going to be faced with tall players for example a Zach Eady who is well over seven feet tall so being able to hit these floaters over top of taller defenders is going to be extremely important he's going to need to get just a bit more higher arc on that floater if he wants to play d1 in my opinion which he's going to be going to D1 100%. I hope that this video has helped you become a better basketball player. If it has, hit that like button and subscribe. And make sure to go check out my custom basketball training programs that are down in the description below. And also make sure if you want my, me to break down your basketball shooting form so that you can shoot the basketball better, make sure to go check out the link down in the description as well. I'll see you guys again in my next video.